Hi friends, it's Miss V, and this week we're learning about Hans. So Miss V is reading, Would You Rather Be a Pollywog? All about pond life from Cat in the Hat. Near your house is a place of which I am fond. It's a body of water that we call a pond. I'm going to visit it. You can come too. Your mother will not mind at all if you do. The sunshine beats down, helping pond plants to thrive. The plants feed the pond animals and keep them alive. From the top of the bottom, from the top to the bottom, I think that you'll see that this pond is here as lively as lively can be. The smallest things here are so tiny. I hope you thought to bring with you your microscope. Come look at this slide. We're in one water drop. Tiny algae plants float and animals hop. So this is a spirulina and this is an amoeba. And you can find those in a pond. They live in the water. These living things feed a good range of creatures, like freshwater snails and slippery leeches. With their teeth like files, snails scour and glean the algae off rocks. They pick them quite clean. This is the algae on the rocks, and there's a snail. And this is a leech, and he likes to suck the bottom. And these are little worms who like to suck the bottom too. Leeches eat the worms way down in the muck. Leeches have muscles that can help them to suck. You might hear the buzz of insects around. A pond is a place where insects abound. Metamorphosis, which is shown on these pages, is one great big word for insects life stages. This book changes little from nymph to adult. Incomplete metamorphosis is the result. So right here he's an adult and then he's a nymph, he's an egg, and this is where his he becomes what he's supposed to be. And then this is a pupa, a larva, and an egg, and we'll learn about that cycle here. Complete metamorphosis, see things choose chart, shows egg, larva, and pupa in adult. The last part. The life of this insect has four distinct stages. Can you see the changes that occur in its ages? Most pond insects bite. Water boatmen do not. As nymphs, they live down in the leaves and drop. Breathing under the water is really no trouble. They swim to the top and drag down the bubble. When the air is used up before they can drown, they capture another and take it back down. When they are ready to take off and fly, they swim to the surface and let their wings dry. So this is a fact that will shock and alarm. Some insects live only two or three days. That's a short life. Before we leave insects, let's visit one more. It's called a water strider. In fact, I see four. With long legs, it runs on the water, and yet it doesn't fall in, and it doesn't get wet. Its belly is waterproof, two middle legs now row, and two hind legs steer. You'll be happy to know. These insects are prey to the fish, frogs, and birds. Of these, we'll go on now and say a few words. So there's a sunfish, and this is a bullhead, and we have a darter, and we have a pumpkin seed. Hmm, I guess he looks like a pumpkin seed. And then we have a snail. We have little larvas. We have bluegill. We have a couple other fish, and we have some algae. The sunfish can swim near the surface like so. And the bullfish and darter both swim 
down below. And the pumpkin seeds teeth are so sharp they don't fail to crush shells and eat them up of the freshwater snail. Bluegill eat larva, a fine fishy treat. For crappy, the algae are tasty to eat. These fish should be wary. You want to know why? Kingfish are, is watching from that tree nearby. When the moment is right, and this is, much, is my hunch, it will swoop down and have some, hmm, maybe lunch. Some fresh fish for, that's right, lunch. These ducks like to nest in the cattails on shore, laying three or four eggs and sometimes even more. When the ducklings hatch out, they follow the mother all in a neat line, one after another. Ducklings are covered with soft fuzzy down, and down helps them to float so that they won't drown. Mom teaches dabblings, ducklings head over feet to fill up the bill with good food to eat. Their grooves in their bills drain the water, you see. The name for the grooves, why? They're called lamelle. At the pond, you will meet, if you have any luck, a swan or a goose or a whistling duck. With swans and geese, get ready for this. Their voice may come out sounding more like a hiss. What is that sitting over on that fallen log? I think you can tell me. Of course, it's a frog. A frog lays her eggs, a clump, and that way the eggs seem too big to be eaten as prey. Inside of the egg, the tadpoles grow, and the gills breathe under the water you know. Hmm. In two weeks, more or less, pop out the pollywogs. Tadpoles is the other name for these baby frogs. Hmm, that's what a pollywog is. They try to blend in, look under those logs, and I think you will find at least six pollywogs. At five weeks, a pollywog changes some more. Hind legs pop out where there were none before. Then frog legs sprout out from two lumps by its head, it loses its gills, and it gets its lungs instead. Its mouth and its jaw widen. Its tail starts to shrink. This pollywog looks like a frog now, I think. You may wonder what makes that loud croaking fellow. Bullfrog is the name of the loud croaking fellow. It puffs up and lets loose. It's the way bullfrogs say, Don't try to eat me. I'm too big. Stay away. He's right here. He has a big bubble of croak. You'll also find here something else rather cute. It's the amphibian that's known as the newt. Miss V likes newts. An amphibian, just so you understand, lives part-time in water and part-time on land. The newt hides its eggs amongst the pond's weeds. Weeds are for protection in a little egg needs. When the egg hatches open, a larvae swims out. It lives in the water and swims all about. The larva gets bigger and turns into an eft. That's the red critter you see on the left. The F crawls about on the land on its legs, but returns to the pond when it's time to lay eggs. Turtle buries her eggs on the banks in the spring. Eating bugs from the pond is her favorite thing. Most turtles back in the heat of the sun 
If you look on the rocks, I think you'll see one. Your mother is calling. It's lunchtime, I see. Tell me which kind of pond life would you rather be? Of all that I've shown you, snail, duck, fish, or frog, I'll tell you right now that I'd rather be hmm, a polywog. I don't know what I'd like to be. I think maybe a newt because I like them the best. I hope you enjoyed Dr. Seuss's Would You Rather Be a Polywog this week while we learn about ponds. Bye, friends. I miss you.